So now that I've talked about parallel programming as a construct or as an, an abstraction with split, apply, combine semantics, let's talk about some ways in which Java provides support for this. And it does this by having three frameworks. One of them is called Fork Join Pool Framework. One of them is called Parallel Streams Framework, and one of them is called Completable Futures. And we'll talk about each of those very briefly here. So Java 7, which I think came out around 2009, 2010 timeframe or so, that introduced the fork join pool framework. And that's a so-called object-oriented framework for parallel processing. And if you want a really interesting overview of fork join pool, take a listen to this interview with my friend Doug Lee, who wrote Fork Join Pool Framework. Great, very insightful. He kind of gives the motivation for how it works and why it works the way it does. The Fork Join Pool provides a high-performance, fine-grained task execution model that supports so-called data parallelism. And data parallelism just means that the data is the unit of parallelization. There's other forms of parallelism or concurrency called task parallelism. And the Fork Join Pool supports so-called data parallelism. Basically, the way it works, and, and several of the other frameworks work in much the similar way, is supports parallel programming by something called divide and conquer. You're very likely to have heard the words divide and conquer before, most likely in a data structures and or algorithms course, where divide and conquer is a style of algorithm. Can anybody think of an example of a divide and conquer algorithm? If you've taken, yeah. Merge sort, great example. What, what's another divide and conquer algorithm? That, that's a good example. Quick sort, yeah. So basically, unlike the, the so-called comparison and exchange sorts, like bubble sort or insertion sort, which kind of work in linear fashion, switching things around as it makes a pass through the data multiple times, the divide and conquer algorithms take the whole data structure to be sorted, like an array and or a list, and then divides it up into typically half-ish, and then it does in parallel, we'll sort them. Well, not in parallel, but you could do it in parallel. But it'll basically divide things up. So with a parallel programming model that uses divide and conquer, it basically works like this. You take the overall problem to solve. And if the problem is small enough, or the sub-problem is small enough, just directly solve it sequentially. Otherwise, split the problem up into independent parts, typically two of them, ideally split evenly and efficiently, and then create new subtasks. You fork these new subtasks, and these subtasks then solve each of the parts, each of the partitions, or the chunks, or the splits, or whatever, in parallel. Once the subparts are done, being solved, join them together, and then compose the results from the sub-results into a final result. And this, of course, takes place recursively through the tree of tasks running in parallel. So that's basically the, the programming model for fork join pool. Internally, the fork join pool uses a very clever technique known as work stealing, which says if there's, let's say there's four cores, we'll have a pool of four threads. Each thread has its own queue called a DEC, double-ended queue. And work that's needed to be processed in parallel is put into the, the, uh, the DEC. So each, each thread in the pool has its own private DEC. And the model is, as long as the worker thread in the pool has something to do in its DEC, it'll be running in parallel. When a worker thread in the pool finds its DEC is empty, because it's not playing with a full DEC, no, it finds something that's empty, it'll then turn around and steal work from some other thread whose DEC is not empty, and then continue to work. And the idea is to try to maximize core utilization by making sure things are always running all the time. OK, so that's, the, that's sort of the object-oriented data parallelism framework that's been around for about a decade or so. Starting in 2014, with so-called Java 8, they added two new parallel programming frameworks based on functional programming. And this would include the wonderful features that came in with Java 8 having to do with things like lambda expressions and method references and more advanced features, which are all the rage now in programming languages, large and small, these days. The two new frameworks are the Parallel Streams framework, which basically takes some data source, like a, a list or an array or a hash map or whatnot, 
and it creates a stream of elements, and then it partitions that stream up into multiple substreams or chunks that can run in parallel. So these elements are then chunked up, and they're processed through a stream or a pipeline of aggregate operations that run behaviors. We don't have to get too carried away with that. I'm just giving you the technical terms. And so as they go through the pipeline of processing phases, these uh, elements in the data stream can run in parallel in different cores. And when they're all done, they're collected together into a single reduced result. Those of you who took the parallels, of course, last semester, remember all this stuff because we did a lot of work with that. These chunks in the substreams can be mapped to multiple threads and multiple cores. So the cool thing about parallel streams is you can start with a purely sequential model of functional programming. And with just one minor little tweak, changing stream to parallel stream, all of a sudden your code runs in parallel on multiple cores. So it's super easy to program once you get the basic model, and it scales up quite nicely. The parallel streams framework leverages the fork join framework we just talked about under the hood to run the various chunks in parallel. So you, you don't actually get exposed to the fork join pool when you use parallel streams, but that's what's being used under the hood to do things in, in parallel. So it's a good example of reuse, systematic reuse. The parallel streams framework, which is a functional programming parallelism model, leverages the older fork join pool, which is an object-oriented model, but you as a parallel streams programmer don't know, don't care. You just know that that's what's happening. So you can basically think about parallel streams providing fine-grained data parallelism using a functional programming model. The second new parallel functional programming framework that's available with Java 8 and beyond, of course, is called Completable Futures. And this is a really interesting model. This, this model here, well, let's see. Let's just go back a second. So the fork join pool, object-oriented approach, if you know Java, classic Java, it's fairly easy to understand, but you have to do a lot of low-level stuff. You have to fork and join and override methods and so on. With the Parallel Streams framework, it's actually very simple. It's a synchronous programming model that happens to map nicely onto multiple cores through the magic of the Parallel Streams framework. And then we get to Completable Futures, which is a completely different programming model altogether. And it uses asynchronous reactive programming. And uh, this has also become the, all the rage these days with things like the Reactive Programming Manifesto and uh, languages like JavaScript, which have features along these lines as well. A lot of modern languages have these kinds of features. And basically what you do with completable futures is you build your application out of a bunch of tasks, and you can have those tasks run asynchronously, which means they don't block the calling thread. They run in a, a pool of threads, which we'll talk about in a second. And as these asynchronous operations complete, the completion of these asynchronous operations trigger dependent actions as the previous asynchronous operations finish. And so you basically have sort of a graph of programming tasks where you can start something. In this case, we start running something in the background. And then when that finishes, we can then go ahead and run these two tasks in parallel. And when they finish, we run this task. So it's basically a task of asynchronous processing. Really fascinating model. I like it quite a bit. But it, it's not at all intuitive if you're accustomed to the more conventional way of doing things. And uh, asynchronous operations can run in parallel in thread pools. And as it turns out, you can either use the common fork join pool, which is what the parallel streams framework uses, which uses fork join pool. Or you can make your own thread pool. You can leverage some other thread pool. We'll talk about a bunch of other thread pools this semester you could use in conjunction with completable futures. So one of the cool things you can also do is you can take the completable futures model, which is all about asynchrony, and you can combine it with the streams model to get basically a functional programming streams approach where the behaviors run asynchronously. And that's really cool. We are not going to have time to cover that in this class. One of the great things about these models is if your programming requirements, if your domain requirements are set up correctly, you don't have to worry about synchronization. You don't have to worry about threading. All these things are pushed into the framework, so you just work on computation and let the framework handle all the details of, of uh, synchronization and threading. 
And that alleviates a bunch of complexities of parallel programming, which is cool. Now, this course, as I mentioned before, is about concurrency. So we're, rather than try to avoid those issues, we're going to revel in them, because that's the whole point of concurrent programming. It's about sharing and coordinating and so on. But for parallel programming, you want things to run independently and then join the results back together only when they absolutely have to. So as I said before, parallel streams and completable futures use the fork join pool. So it's a really good example of, of reuse. OK, so that's the end of the overview of parallelism frameworks in Java. You can see there's a range of them. And there's actually even more that have come in later versions of Java, but that's even further outside the scope of this class.